One thing that we always like to ask is about failures. So in your career, what has been like your biggest failure or, you know, something that didn't go so well for you? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm first of all glad that you're focusing on both sides of the story. So I I once had a project where I was more or less duped into believing, maybe I was too gullible, that we had to meet an aggressive timeline. And I was new to the team and I let my own fear of failure and my need and desire to impress everyone lead me to put a lot of pressure on the team. And it really burned a lot of them out in the process. And what makes it worse, we actually did deliver on time, which surprised a lot of people. And then we found out our operations teams weren't ready or planning to use the new feature for several weeks. So after that, I promised I'd never again commit to an aggressive deadline unless, one, every single one of our partners was ready to commit, and two, there was a tangible customer or company impact. Now, one example of putting this lesson to use, I was on a team that had a lot of work tied to legal and compliance requirements. These were really hard for the team to push back on because, of course, regulatory deadlines can't, you know, they're not flexible and there's a tangible impact to the company. However, there was simply too much work for the team, so I knew we'd have to prioritize at some point. And to better understand the implications, I asked for an actual copy of the regulations that were driving the requirements. And I must have read over 50 pages of legalese to really understand it better. And what I discovered is that only a subset of our features were actually mandatory, absolutely mandatory, you know. And there had been some scope creep internally along the way. So our backlog became much more manageable. The team realized it's okay to push back. Uh, They just might need to do a little extra research in the process. Yeah. I've seen like uh, talking to leaders or managers over and over again, it seems like whenever there's kind of this overly aggressive deadline, it's pretty rare that it's a positive experience for for everyone. (laughs) Everything has to line up perfectly to be a positive experience, but usually it's more uh, like uh, what you're saying with a failure. If, if you're an engineering leader and you're getting kind of these aggressive deadlines thrown at you over and over again, what do you think you should do in that situation? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that a leader needs to do is be the protector of their team, even if it comes at their own expense reputationally. But they can protect themselves and their teams with with data. You know, like this is our capacity. This is the impact of overburdening and pushing our engineers too much. It might be attrition. It might be burnout. It might be quality. And then really pushing on the notion of prioritization and and reducing scope and knowing that there's something that might drive higher value and that should come first. But they yeah. can't all be number one priorities, which we, which we have a joke on because we always have <laughs> we have a prioritized list and there will be like five or six number ones. <laughs> out there. Yeah. Yeah. Data seems to always kind of uh, I, I don't want to say win arguments, but it's something that can convey or bring everyone together. If you're talking to your CEO saying, hey, let's just first start with the data. So we're all on the same page of where we're at. This is how fast we're moving. Here's maybe some issues that we've had, you know, in prod with our MTTR. Here's our cycle time. Here's our project predictability to date. And now, you know, you're asking my team to do this other thing, let's say. Here's how I expect the data to now look if you want to take on this, you know, challenge. And I think a lot of the times the person on the other side says, oh, like, I I don't know. I didn't know about this data. Like, thank you for showing me this.